Hey ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos, and today we're going to be giving you an overview and talking about the Turn Touch. So what is the Turn Touch? The Turn Touch is a wooden smart remote. This actually started out as a Kickstarter and came to life and manufactured actually locally here in San Francisco. I want to talk a little bit about that. But before diving into it, my thoughts and opinions on the device, I want to give a disclaimer. Samuel and the folks over at Turn Touch sent this out to me for me to check out. And furthermore, they're going to be sponsoring an upcoming content campaign um, I have on the Smart Home series as a whole. So we're going to be looking at um, different uh, smart home devices, how you can implement them in your setup overall, and they're going to be one of the sponsors for that upcoming content uh, campaign. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, but despite that, my opinions, my thoughts on this device are based on my experience solely. Um, and um, yeah, with that, let's jump right into it. Like I said, the Turn Touch is this wooden remote, and this is genuine wood when it comes to the design, um, that you can use to control multiple devices within your smart home, be it your Sonos speaker system, your Hue lights, your Belkin Wemo devices, or your Nest thermostat even, um, and a bunch of other different devices. So it has a great support for a lot of the ecosystems in there, but you're thinking, like, how does that remote, that simple remote with these four basic buttons, control all of that? And we'll dive into that. But first, let's talk about the design. Um, like I said, this is made and manufactured here in San Francisco. I had the opportunity actually to go see behind the scenes at the wood shop where uh, they're made. A bit that, that spins in it, like carves things oh, out. Wow. So you can see here, we're, we're carving out the buttons. Oh, wow. And it, you know, it gets, um, gets everything from, like you can see here, these are before they're cut out, they have the little indentations yeah. on them. So that's where it starts, this is the initial. These one. are the buttons. Okay. So those wow. are the, um, they're electronics, it needs to be really precise. For sure, yeah. Just in yeah. Terms. And the pedestals, are they made the same? Are they on yeah. uh, the same, yeah. same machine? Wow, you can see, wow. Uh, and pick mine up. Um, you can get these in Central American rosewood with sycamore buttons or mahogany with maple buttons. And this is genuine wood. I'm talking about this, the, the feel, the touch, or same thing, <laughs> the smell. Um, genuine wood. And I've always been a sucker for like genuine wooden designs overall. Um, but all of that packed into that's just held together by two magnets here in the remote. Um, a basic circuit board that goes in there and is your interaction for your smart home. Uh, devices there, that circuit board that connects via Bluetooth uh, to your Mac or iOS device, and they have a turn touch app that allows you to configure your remote. So think of your remote as your bridge, and then your Mac or your iPhone as the controller ultimately. Um, so that being said, all this is packaged in this really cool design. You can get it uh, with an additional touches like this mother of pearl inlay. You can also get this turn touch pedestal, which acts as a kind of like docking station because you can like mount this on your wall and just kind of plop your device in there and it connects via a magnet there. Um, and there's no need to charge this. There's no need to plug it into anything because it, it's all powered by a single cell coin battery that lasts on average about a year. But if you need to, if it dies for any reason, you can simply just pull this out, pop out the battery and replace it and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, really cool, really unique design, and that's kind of the first thing that stood out to me. Um, but furthermore is its versatility, because the Turn Touch is a smart remote that uh, is simple in its design, yet complex in its nature. Because once you connect it via your iOS or Mac app, you can configure these four buttons to do a lot of different things. Think of each button as a uh, preset. You can hold the top button, for example, to control your Hue lights. And now when you, if I hold the top button and I go into that Hue lights preset, now all four buttons are, you know, solely configured for your Hue lights. The top one can raise the brightness, the bottom one can lower the brightness, the right one can turn it off, the left one can set a scene. And if I hold the right, that would go into configuration mode for my Sonos speakers, so on and so forth. So all these buttons, you know, at each serve their purpose. Furthermore, once you're in a mode, so let's say I'm in that Hue light mode, um, I can single press or I can double tap a button to get more functionality out of a, uh, of a button. So it's not just four buttons now, it's, and technically it's eight, and you have these different configurations to them. Um, that's a really cool thing about the Turn Touch and that you have all these different combinations um, from these four simple buttons. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that setup process. So here we are taking a look at the Turn Touch app for iOS. As you can see here, I have my remote connected to my iPhone and you can see the four basic configurations that you have here. So you have each button configured to a preset. So in my case, it's Wemo, Music, Hue, and Sonos. So if I hold any one of those buttons, so if I hold the left button there, it'll jump into Hue mode. If I hold the bottom one, it'll jump into Sonos mode. Keeping in mind the app, 
uh, can be I can be on my home screen, I can be in another app, or the phone can be in sleep mode, and I can still jump to each of those settings as needed as long as the app is running in the background and then it's connected via Bluetooth. So within those settings, you have the ability to configure each button. So now that I'm in Sonos mode, the down button will be volume down. I can change that, of course, by tapping on it and adding a new action or simply just changing the existing action. So you can see you have options like with Sonos, at least the ability to do things like muting, play, pause, jumping between tracks. Um, with the hue lights, for example, I have the option to raise brightness, uh, do things like shift colors, um, do certain scenes or trigger a specific scene or even do like a color loop. So these are all different things that you can do within the different ecosystems depending on the device. Now, it doesn't have to be one specific category. So even though this one's like all Hue, all Sonos, you can have a category for just miscellaneous commands. So for example, this one says Wemo, but I can go ahead and you can see I can take this turn off button. I don't actually have Wemo devices here, but instead of using this action right here, I'll say add a new action. And you can see here, I can have it be like, you know, control my Nest thermostat or run an IFTTT command. And that's where it gets real interesting because you can have it do if this, then that triggers. You can do things with HomeKit. There's so much cool and different custom ability here that really just changes up the game here. So you can have each of these individual buttons do something different. It doesn't have to be within the same category or space. Furthermore, if you want to change the entire you know, category, then you can do that as well at the very top here. You can have it control things like I can jump to my camera and I can have it take a photo, flip back or front. So this can act as a essentially a Bluetooth remote for your iPhone even. Um, so it gets really interesting in terms of the capabilities that you have when it comes to configuring each of the buttons. Jumping in the top right, you have the ability to add a new remote if you have one. You can jump into your basic settings here. You can have it play or enable a vibrate or play a sound on app change. That's simply the presets there. Um, so if I hold the button, you'll hear that playback, that little uh, notification there to let me know that it's changed modes. Um, and you have other abilities here within settings to configure. So you can go back in there and change those other options. In the bottom, you have the ability to see things like your battery as far as the battery on the remote, the firmware. Um, you have the ability to rename it, the remote, forget the remote, so on and so forth. So you can check on all of these things as needed and jump between them. Really simple, really easy. So you get the idea. The idea being you set it all once and then you forget about it and then you can just kind of tweak it as needed as you go along and adjust your setup. Um, let's briefly go into my personal experience with the Turn Touch. I've been using this for a couple weeks now within my smart home setup, whether it's the office, uh, living room, bedroom, so on and so forth. Uh, and for the most part, I've always used it controlled via my iPhone, the iPhone app, um, because it connects via Bluetooth and it's more convenient because I always have my iPhone with me. My iPhone's typically always on versus if it's connected to my Mac, my Mac is not always within, you know, range. And, and since this is using Bluetooth to connect to the Mac, um, it's not always as convenient as having my iPhone control it all. Now, that being said, you can use one remote across multiple, multiple devices. So I can connect this to my Mac, I can connect it to my iPhone, I can connect it to my iPad even. However, the drawback there is that um, the con configs don't live on the remote. They live on the device you're connecting to. So if I connect to my MacBook, um, that's a completely, these four buttons have a completely different preset based off of what my iPhone has. So those configs don't sync across different devices as of right now. Um, furthermore, it, it's just the, you know, the portability and the convenience of just having this in, in a form factor like this. Like, look, we all have like those, you know, multiple remotes <laughs> with our techs and with our electronics we, where we have like a remote for the TV, we have a remote for, um, you know, our speakers or our sound system. And then even the s complex smart remotes that are out there right now just have so many different buttons and are this convoluted setup process. Um, I I've tested a bunch, I've tried a bunch. What's so great about this is it's simple in its design and its interface as far as the buttons, um, but it still offers that functionality where you can control multiple devices and go into multiple modes. And I think that's exactly what a smart home remote should be. Not to mention it comes in at just a $50 price point. Uh, where a lot of these other remotes I've tested are $100 and up. Um, but again, it, it does all that while offering a really unique design and, and compact design. And I you know, can walk into my house, I can play music in the kitchen, I can play music in the living room, I can turn the lights on, I can turn the lights off, adjust different scenes, all from this convenient remote that fits literally in my pocket. So let's break down the pros and cons of the Turn Touch remote. The design for me is a huge pro. I'm a huge fan of the genuine wood design. If you appreciate something like that, then this is definitely for you. 
Um, the versatility of it all, of course, like I mentioned, even though you have these four simple buttons, you have the ability to really control a slew of devices, and that ecosystem is only growing. Um, and last but not least, like I mentioned, the price point. The price point is just killer for me. Whether you're looking for an entry level, um, you know, smart remote, or you have existing setups, you know, look, I'm a huge proponent of things like voice assistants. I have Alexa. I have Echoes all around my house and my setup. But it's nice to have that physical hardware solution. It's nice to have something reliable where I'm not shouting in the dark for my lights to turn on and waiting. Um, there goes my voice assistant right now, randomly triggering, or not randomly, but you get the idea. This is simple. This is, you know, if I am in the right mode, I hit a button, it does what it needs to do, and it just works. And that's what I really like about this. Uh, now, as far as the cons go, uh, I do wish there was a way to sync config settings across multiple devices. Um, as of right now, they live individually on each device. Um, and I also just wish there was a better way to tell what mode you're in without looking at the app. On the Mac, it's much easier because it lives in your menu bar and you can see which mode you're in, which preset mode. Um, but sometimes if I just randomly pick up the remote, um, and, you know, I want to, I have to make sure I hold the button first to make sure I'm in that preset before, you know, just clicking it because sometimes like I'll, I'll go to turn on my light and I'll accidentally start playing music. Um, but that didn't happen too much for me after like it took like an adjustation period because after the first, I'd say like week and a half of using it, I pretty much knew my setup. I knew that this controls my, you know, my speakers, this controls my lights, so on and so forth. And once you get used to how your setup is, like I said, you can just kind of set it and then forget it. But yeah, overall, at its price point, it, it really can't be beat. I think it's in a, a happy medium category of its own where it's it's not overly complex and it's it's still very simple in its design and, and unique and it stands out in that uh, you know regard. Um, Turn Touch, they did a really great job with this. I think it's a really unique smart home product and if you're looking for something that's convenient and elegant in its design uh, and yet you know technical in its nature, then look no further than the Turn Touch remote. More information and links will be in the description down below. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.